Hi, uh, for those of you that have been here before, welcome back. And uh, if you're new here and just ended up on this video somehow, welcome to the channel. Most of my videos here are currently covering my gradual rebuild of this 1974 C-Ray SRV 240 Weekender. It was completely rotten when I got it. Uh, it's a small uh, express cruiser, cabin cruiser type of boat with a small berth for sleeping, small galley area for cooking, as well as a head, a bathroom. I am currently working on the interior of the cabin. In my last video, I had just finished putting up the vinyl headliner, gluing it on. It's my first time ever doing something like that. And in this video, I am kind of trimming it out. So hiding the, the joints, the cut edges where the one piece of vinyl joins onto the other. So as I briefly showed in my video last time, my idea was to take some vinyl, uh, fold the edges over, run them through the sewing machine and create some trim pieces for it. So the uh, sewing machine that I'm using is a 1954 era Singer 1591. I bought it used uh, a couple of years ago when I was doing the seat cushions for my smaller boat project. And there's links for those uh, videos as well below. I bought that specific sewing machine after doing a fair bit of research online on various boat restoration forums and things like that. And it seems like it's a really good sewing machine for doing that. And uh, the Singer 1591, along with its um, cousin, I guess, the Singer 201, are considered a couple of the toughest uh, home use sewing machines ever built. They're all steel, uh, certainly the 1591 is all steel construction. But the big difference between that and a lot of the other singers is that the Singer 1591 and the 201 both use a direct drive. There's a motor uh, mounted directly on the back with a worm gear that drives the machine rather than a belt drive like most sewing machines use. The guy that I bought the sewing machine from had been using it for sewing multiple layers of canvas to make big tents. And he had just upgraded to an industrial machine, so he was selling it. And the thing is in beautiful condition, works perfectly. Uh, I haven't had to do anything with it, well, until in this project I finally bent a needle and I had to put a new needle in it, but fortunately those are relatively inexpensive. I found some online for a few bucks for a pack of 50 of them, so I'm set for needles even if I bend a few more. Operation of the sewing machine is really easy. If you want to know more about it, just download one of the Singer manuals. You can find copies of them that people have scanned and it's very simple but quite thorough in how to thread it and how to adjust it and all the rest of it. So I won't go into that. But the basic controls of the sewing machine are really easy. There's a lever on the back that lifts, lifts and lowers the foot. Uh, there's a knob on the end that adjusts the thread tension for the upper thread. The bobbin on the bottom has a little screw on it for adjusting that tension. I've never had to touch that since I got it. Just fill the bobbin up with more thread when I run out. Lever on the front, push it down to go forwards, lift it up to go backwards. The farther you move it, the larger the stitches are. And a foot control to start and stop, adjust the speed. And that's about it for running this machine. It's, it's really simple. I don't have any sewing experience. My wife does, but I don't. Uh, first time around, I sewed the seat cushions and everything worked great. And this time around, even though I didn't get my stitching straight all the time, the only issue I had was when I moved the material, four layers of vinyl, the wrong way and I bent the needle. But that was my fault, not the sewing machine's fault. Back to the trim pieces in the boat. When I put the vinyl headliner in, obviously the ceiling and everything was not flat, so I had to do it in multiple pieces. And so there's a number of places where the pieces of vinyl meet and there's just the cut unfinished edges. So I'm just trying to hide those with some vinyl trim that I'm making up now. Uh, additionally, because I really didn't know what I was doing, my seam across the center of the cabin ended up being a little bit crooked, so I wanted to hide that as well. And so I need to put a little bit wider piece on there, centered to hide the crooked seam. So I originally made all the pieces out of the headliner material with the foam backing, but then I realized that I had some gray vinyl left over from the seat material that didn't have a foam backing, so I used that for the center piece instead on the, on the top. Uh, just to make it a little thinner, a little less protrusion down to, so it didn't reduce the head clearance at all. Uh, the rest I did out of the headliner, headliner material. So, you know, here's a piece down the uh, right or the starboard side of the boat. Uh, and then here's the piece on the other side of the boat. Here's where I put the uh, gray vinyl across the middle. 
when I put the gray vinyl up on the ceiling, what I did was I masked down both sides of where I was going to put it on uh, to protect the, the headliner material. And then I used some of the spray adhesive, sprayed it onto the ceiling, sprayed it onto the back of the gray vinyl, and then waited a little bit so it tacked up and then put that into place. For the vinyl that I put up in here, um, what I did was I used some of this uh, vinyl cement. Now, you got to be careful when you're using this stuff because the, the spray adhesive, if you accidentally get that onto the front of the vinyl uh, where it's going to show, it will wipe off with a careful wipe of some paint thinner or something. Any kind of a solvent like that seems to take the glue off pretty cleanly, pretty easily. This uh, vinyl cement is made for bonding vinyl to vinyl. And what it does, as soon as it hits the vinyl, it actually seems to dissolve the surface of the vinyl a little bit. Understandably, if it does that on both surfaces and then it fuses them together, you can have a good, good uh, grip. The problem is when you drip it on any of the vinyl that you don't want it on, it will damage the vinyl. So what I had to do was carefully uh, put masking tape along the bottom edge of this and newspaper down to protect anything so it didn't drip onto there brushed it on there, brushed it onto the pieces that I had sewn together and then put it on. And that stuff grabs really hard, really fast. Um, it's really messy, messy to work with. It's a, um, like a brush in the can and it's a thick, clear liquid that kind of wants to drip everywhere. So if you're going to use it, works great, but be careful with it because you can make a really big mess in a hurry. So overall, I, I'm happy with how things uh, turned out. Um, I'm happier with my results now than I was at the end of last week's video. With the trim on there and a little bit of time to work some of the wrinkles out, it's not perfect, but for my first try, I'm happy with it. And uh, it's starting to come together. So I think I'm gonna leave this video right here. Um, if you liked it, click the like button. If you want to see more and don't want to miss it, make sure you subscribe. If you have any questions about anything, post the questions below. I'll try to answer them. Remember, I'm not an expert in any of this. I'm just learning as I go and just showing you my mistakes and everything else that I, that I do. And next uh, time around, I will be working on the galley cabinets, getting the polyurethane sealer on them and starting to install them.